Hello, this is Hawker Debean, and today we are going to be finishing the Major's Path. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe up to the channel. Now let's get right into this. The heat emanating from her left eye distracted Catherine Sinclair from the pain in her right side. Unicorn horns were serrated, and hurt like a mother when she was torn off of of it, but it would heal. It wasn't healing quick enough, however, and she hated the way it felt against the hospital gown. She knew of a way into three portlets within Oregon at Health and Science University Hospital. That's why she'd asked to be taken here. She didn't know where it led now, but used to go to Deer College's primary medical building. The way was in a vending machine inside the nurse's lounge. It would have been easy enough to sneak in, leave an illusion with the codex to make her look like an overly tired nurse. But the lounge had an armed guard on it. He looked like he was in riot gear. Sinclair recognized the grenades and on his belt as choked us, a bear of, of bronze powder that grounded magic. Sinclair looked around. She hadn't had time to look before, but the Sarah halls of the hospital were filled with coalition agents, both plank flows and in combat gear. Coalition here? Shit. <clears throat> Catherine? Sinclair spun around, feeling her stitches strain. The disappointment on her husband's face was plain to see. You should be resting. With the way to three Portlands and the last shard in the same hospital, and coalition and agents everywhere. She frowned. You don't know what they're doing, what they're going to do with the codex. Would it be any worse than what we would do with it? Reynolds folded his hands together. Who is to say that the foundation wouldn't just use it to keep magic on a leash? I'm not going to let that happen. Don't care if I have to stare that on the council in person. Magic's going to come back on its own terms, but only if we have all of the Codex. She looked around the corner. Damn it, we have to get in there. How? Reynolds pointed a finger at his head. Think, Catherine. Think. You think there's only one way into the city from here? Only one way to the college, even? She frowned, then tapped the cugs that occupied her left eye. She didn't even need to speak a command. She simply thought it. Seek. Lines of golden light appeared in her vision. At least a dozen of them. One of them led into the nurse's lounge that was a closet. But another led into an elevator that had been vacated by collation agents and an easy and an uneasy-looking doctor. Red Oats and Sinclair ran into the, uh, and into the elevator. Sinclair's hands, guided by the codex, performed the knock on the elevator's buttons, and it descended. Three portlets was anything but natural. It was created from semantic, ic, semantic and conceptual associations between three different cities named Portland. A purely human phenomena, phenomenon. And yet, when the elevators opened into the main atrium of Deer College's science campus, they were met with a forest growing inside of the building. A pine tree as thick as a smoke oak had sprouted from the center of the atrium, growing at such speed that it had blown a hole through the roof, leaving marble and glass scattered on the ground. This too had been overgrown by a variety of small shrubs and undergrowth. It's like the Pacific Northwest decide to invade. Sinclair was stepped around it. On the other side was a door leading to the, out to the rest of the college, which more resembled a temperate rainforest than a college campus. The horizon was above the ground, as was typical of Three Portlands. And exiting the building was a disorienting experience. experience. Did the Codex do this? Reynolds frowned. How? My guess? 
and woke up the mayor, and the mayor just assumed that everyone left, so she dug into a route that was blocking the exit to the building. They decided to remake Three Portlands into something that was more human-free. Hmm. Reynolds had to crash beneath the route. Where's the shard, then? Seek, Sinclair thought. A focused beam of violet light shot from her vision, pointing to the center of the cap campus. This way. They strode into the forest, not noticing the elevator opening behind them. The final codex fragment hung over a dear hung suspended over a dear college's campus ill. The seal was composed of stone and steel. Jut at about three feet out of the ground was three feet wide, emblazoned with their college's coat of arms. Superstition said that I have a couple of be or kiss upon it at noon or midnight, they read together for the rest of their lives. It sat in the middle of a grove uh, of, ever of evergreens taller than the horizon. Almost done. <sighs> Why is it floating there? Bradle sealed his head. None of the others have... Hmm... Maybe it's been kept suspended by the latent eve that's in the air. Three Portlands was always thick with this stuff. She blinked and looked up. Or maybe it has something to do with that, that nanowire keeping it suspended from that tree branch. Trap? Clumsy one. Private distraction from... Sinclair felt a other wave of pressure hit her back and found herself swirling in with her head on the seal. Nose bloody from the impact. Boots added all around her, and she found a muzzle press on the back of her neck. There was a snap as the nine wire broke, and a violet codex fragment collided with a blue one. Then, in the hand of a coalition agent wearing a neat black suit, a veil hand that held it was burned in a spiderweb pattern. She sneered, he sneered at her from behind a pair of sunglasses. Now I know what you're thinking. That I haven't seen in, in a villain as that I haven't seen a villain as cliche as you since the Black Autumn? She snorted. <laughs> Not surprising, though. How are there still more bows out there? Bell left. Oh, fuck, that's right. You're from Slot's Pit. God. We're going to bulldoze that town. He tossed the codex between his hand. And you remember what I said in High Brazil? Coalition wanted all the magic in the world. Can't imagine why. If you found out Narnia was real, you'd roll in as many A-bombs as possible. Press that air and shut the wardrobe behind you. It's a bit more complex than that. The way that place was... Is, was affecting the way I speak. I was shrugged. Magic is like iron, Dr. Sinclair. By itself, it doesn't have much use. Sure. It keeps the world spinning, keeps the magnetic field magnetized, and you can beat each other to death with just raw iron. But it can be refined by humans, made into butter knives, or swords, or gun barrels. That's what Avatar is like you have been doing for centuries, without any control. He looked between the codex X in his hand, and at the one in Sinclair's eyes. That's what we aim to bring, control over magic, under our terms. He had of his two sevens of the codex. But we don't have the complete package here. So what? Hostage exchange? My eye for my husband? Or maybe you'll offer me a position you're organized. Well, not as the agent holding her down. She served face bow, and she felt two points of heat at her back. Her, her pair of pops and a pain of well. Felt warm undone both, her, both sides of her. She looked down in disbelief as we as blood began to pour into her mouth, and the agent laid her down on the seal. Her vision started to grow gray as he began to extract the codex from her left eye socket. Ding -dub. King Ingdabayat was, was right. Never monologue, unless you're going to do something about it. There were two more gunshots. Montgomery Reynolds landed next to her, body shaking from the shock of the impact. This, Sinclair gurgled. This, this, no, this, this isn't how. She heard Bao walk off, trying to push herself up to look at him. He had the codex in one hand, trying to recombine it. 
She could expend the rest of her life in one stroke of, of hatred energy directed at him. Make the code of XP forever lost in collision. Teleport back to Site 87. Or she could save her husband. Monty, she yelled onto her face. Monty, you need to promise me you'll stop them. You'll find the Codex. N no point. He claps his hand around hers. A world without you and a world without magic are the same thing. His eyes flare shot and his breathing turned shallow. No. 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 Sinclair's eye died around. Look for any help. The ley lines that ran through three Portlands could maybe put him on life support for a few hours. She needed the Codex if she wanted to save the both of them. But she could feel it exiting this plane from away from the sheer power vacuum it left. <sighs> the void occupied by your left eye landed on a blue light in her husband's pocket. She reached into it and found a, a shard of blue crystal. She remembered now. It had broken off during the scuffle in La Rue Macabre. Uh, right. Monte had picked it up. She wasn't sure how much was left in it, but maybe enough to sustain them. Monte, we're going to be okay. She produced Mary Lott's phone and called for personal well, personnel down at Deer College. They joined hands with him and for the shard of uh, Oricalc goes in between them. This spell will sustain us until we can get medical here. It's going to be okay. Just repeat after me. She took a breath and exerted her will. Deta Adoriaso. He coughed. I I can't. Can't make the sounds. Say it in English then. She held onto his hand and kissed his lips. It means I will not fade. Please, Monty. Please. They continue to chant as new time passed overhead. How interesting. It's the same as the other one. End of log. <sighs> Three days following the theft of the ORE Calcos Codex, SCP 6500A Codex, by agents of the Global Cocoa Coalition, and that was issued that Dr. Catherine Jean Sinclair and her husband, Alch Alchemical Consultant Nagabri, have been posted. Obviously, a the Foundation Medal of Honor and that the funeral for both parties would take place in Slot's Pit, Wisconsin, where they had lived and worked most of the time in the Foundation. Residual narrative energies were manipulated to ensure that forces of the Global Occult Coalition, led by Martin Bao, attempted to evade the Nexus on the same day as the funeral. The vast majority of the site would be attending. The Coalition successfully occupied the main and urban center of, of Nexus 18 in an attempt to capture Foundation assets or Foundation its civilians for internment and or interrogation, a plan to invade Site 87. However, narrative forces within an NX-18 greatly hindered the coalition efforts in several ways. An unexpected reunion between an agent of the coalition and her former recruiting fiancé who believed her to be dead, causing an entire strike team to turn against Bao's forces. A group of teenagers in a past day, several agents of silk weaponry and supplies, which were then used to fortify various schools within the city. The sudden and reemergence of a UAE Chapman 971, the Jam Burglar, who surprised the tainted broadcast and submission and submissions sent by I coalition forces. Several dozen, dozen survivalists distributing a vast array of, of weaponry to citizens trying to use it while simultaneously providing shelter to civilians in bunkers of currently unknown size. This culminated in Arts and Balf reaching the entrance to Site 87, whereupon he attempted to reach the director's office in what is likely to be an assassination attempt. The director had been evacuated during several hours previously, and instead he found Dr. Sinclair and Gonzalo Reynolds. While severely injured, with Sinclair nearly losing her unborn child, both had survived and were recovering.
Bars and Barrel attempt to use energy from the Oricoco's Codex to imbue to subdue Sinclair and Reynolds. The pair of them had been exposed to the Codex for over a month prior to Rao's acquisition of the object, which caused the object to become attuned with their being. This in turn allowed Sinclair to work a right, which removed it from Bao's possession and placed it into the foundations. Bao's body was then subjected to the weight of an alignant narrative he had carried since his entry into Slot's pit, causing cardiac arrest. He is currently in critical condition, but is expected to recover and send trial. And that was the Path of the Mage. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow I will be starting on the Path of the Cleric. So until then, goodbye!